Um, so thanks everyone. Uh, I'm going to uh, run through some upcoming architectural features uh, from ARM. Uh, whilst I'm presenting it, there are much uh, greater minds than myself uh, behind the scenes. Um, so uh, do bear with me. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, run through some of the new architectural features in ARM V8, so ARM64 uh, primarily, and uh, there's quite a bit here, so I, I will rattle through it. Um, obviously, the slides will be made available um, at the end uh, if you wish to peruse in, in more detail. Uh, one of the caveats is a lot of the examples that will be given are on Linux, unfortunately and not on BSD. Um, we're hoping that uh, that will change in the future. Um, the definitive reference is the ARM ARM, uh, so the ARM architectural reference manual, uh, which is uh, freely available to you. Uh, so things that I'm going to look at covering uh, is from ARM 8.1 through 8.5, and uh, a little sneak peek of uh, after 8.5, so large system extensions, uh, persistent memory, uh, SVE scalable vector extensions, uh, profiling, nested vert, uh, some security features like point, uh, point authentication, um, memory partitioning, uh, uh, memory tagging, uh, and uh, beyond the horizon with transactional memory. So uh, large system extensions, LSE, uh, you'll see from the title there, we've implemented a new um, feature uh, nomenclature. So uh, features are categorized as feet underscore whatever the feature is. Um, so as you can see here, um, LSE allows atomic operations uh, in a, a single instruction. Uh, and it also allows uh, the system perform, uh, to perform uh, the atomic operations outside of the CPU. Um, the atomic operations are rather fundamental, so uh, you can't really uh, select them with uh, hardware capabilities or iPhones. Um, there is a multi-lib uh, mechanism, um, primarily in glibc. Um, that supports the uh, hardware capability underscore atomic, um, but that would provoke multiple binaries, so uh, resulting in multiple builds. Um, best way has been developed, so uh, GCC 10, uh, GCC 9.4, uh, they've got support for uh, outline atomics. Um, Performing a direct branch to select the appropriate code sequence uh, at runtime as a result of uh, the outlines. Uh, and we've run practical tests on uh, things like DPDK, uh, lock stress test um, harness. That shows very little uh, performance degradation. Um, the outline atomics are currently uh, in progress for Clang, not quite there yet. Uh, but it is uh, in flight, uh, and uh, KMU uh, 3 and above uh, does support emulation of the uh, LSE extensions. Uh, persistent memory um, with the uh, point of persistence um, and uh, deep persistence. Um, this is required, uh, you know, to uh, for the ARM64 kernels to uh, pick up NV DIMMs, uh, and the firmware needs to expose uh, the requisite NFIP uh, through ACPI. Um, an example for uh, SVE uh, using uh, LDFFLib. Um, if you look at the example, I've uh, got block of memory uh, 0.2 by 0. But as it crosses a page boundary uh, and the next page isn't present, um, there's a chance that it will fault on access. Uh, so 
the register P1 uh, is a predicate register. Um, it dictates uh, which lanes um, are affected uh, and then uh, sets the lanes to zero that aren't selected. Uh, results stored in, in Z0 and uh, which is a SVE register uh, and the number of lanes is implementation defined, um, but it's discover uh, discoverable at runtime. Um, and so the, the example here, the, the instruction won't actually provoke a page fault uh, if it loads the first lane successfully. Um, SVE is an optional feature in arm 8.2. Um, it does add another set of registers, uh, Z0 through 31. Uh, so that's the uh, lower 128 bits of the map uh, over to uh, V0 and V31. Uh, the size is implementation uh, defined. It can vary from 128 bits to uh, 2048 uh, bits wide. Uh, currently, the Fujitsu A64FX SOC is the only um, silicon available at the moment uh, that has SVE. Uh, there are others in flight, uh, but the A64FX is the uh, SOC that actually powers the uh, Fugaku supercomputer, which is the fastest one uh, in the world at the moment, not just the fastest ARM uh, supercomputer, but the fastest. Um, and so uh, the predicate registers uh, 0 to 15 uh, have also been added. And so uh, 0 to 7 uh, can be used to affect how the instruction operates. Uh, and you know, they're effectively governing predicates. Uh, there's fault uh, first fault register as well, uh, which is used to handle crossing memory page boundaries. Uh, and all of that uh, allows one program, uh, one to program SVE without knowing how big uh, the uh, vector widths are, or even how big the array of data is at compile time. Uh, in other words, uh, there's much, there's a load more scenarios where SVE can be applied to where uh, the existing uh, NEON um, instruction set wouldn't be suitable. So things like string handling. Uh, but SVE is uh, significant enough that I could get somebody from our uh, toolchain compiler team to uh, go on about it and for at least an hour and a half if you so desire. Um, so in this uh, string length example, um, it just shows another way how uh, SVE uh, can be used. As I mentioned, I'll be rattling through uh, fairly quickly uh, so you can uh, reference these examples uh, afterwards. So support for SVE, um, it's supported in uh, GCC 8.1 and above and LLVM 5. Uh, auto vectorization is expected to improve uh, as each release comes out. Um, so Linux supports SVE from uh, kernel 4.15. Uh, SVE2 um, is uh, slightly different um, and that's able to be uh, handled by user space from or passed through to user space from kernel 5.2. Uh, and QMU uh, 3.1 uh, has full support for SVE. Um, ARM have also uh, developed uh, an instruction emulator uh, based on Dynamo Rio. Uh, which is uh, freely available, um, and uh, that has full SVE support in, within that. Uh, and some of the uh, commercial uh, compilers do also support um, SVE. Uh, the intrinsics uh, can be used rather than the assembler, uh, and if you so desire to do that, uh, if you uh, pop over to developer.arm, uh, you'll be able to get the documentation to tell you how to do that. Um, so statistical profiling extension, uh, another uh, optional feature, uh, some for 8.2. Um, so it's taking the uh, PMU and, and sampling it in a more 
more traditional way. Um, it relies on interrupts rather than the, uh, so then the kernel can uh, gather all the data needed. Um, the statistical profile extension gives a contextual information um, for the actual event uh, and can sample everywhere um, that's allowed by the uh, by whatever security um, has been implemented. SPEs access in perf. Uh, so if you're using perf, uh, that's how you go about uh, accessing it. Um, and so that the support landed in kernel 416 with perf and it supports ACPI um, from 5.3. Uh, so it's uh, all available now uh, in the upstreams. Uh, nested vert um, is an optional uh, feature again. Um, it was introduced with 8.3 um, and is enhanced even further with 8.4 with uh, Nested Vert 2, uh, which removes a lot of the trapping. The uh, support within um, Linux, primarily KVM, uh, is still being developed uh, and uh, there are patches uh, waiting to be merged upstream. Uh, so it's still a um, somewhat moving target, if you will, uh, and it's not quite been finalized. Um, and it would be something that we would like to see ultimately within uh, the likes of Beehive. Um, point authentication. Um, and so the possible or it may well be possible uh, to overflow the stack buffers uh, with the payload that um, is controlled. Um, on uh, um, neither stack nor the most uh, nor most of the date buffers are executable. Uh, if you look at the above example though um, you could control the value uh, of x30 um, Thus, you could, in theory, uh, dictate control flow uh, to uh, resident code. Uh, so something like GLC routines. Um, suitable routines, uh, commonly known as gadgets, uh, can then lead to uh, a Turing complete exploit uh, within the data buffer, um, somewhat termed uh, as a return orientate programming attack. So that's what we're trying to solve with Point Raw, uh, Point Roth. Um, it's it will be more commonly known as PAC um, with an arm. Uh, rather than, it was originally known as PAUTH, uh, but that's uh, somewhat changed to uh, PAC now uh, as the common name for it, um, which effectively means that the uh, pointers are, are cryptographically signed. Uh, and that was introduced in 8.3. Um, and so that provides a means to protect pointers from outside manipulation uh, as per the previous example. Um, you can have an optional modifier uh, you, uh, to use as a salt for your pack. Um, so uh, before being used, uh, pointers authenticated uh, there and then. If the pack bits are valid, um, your upper bits are going to be cleared, uh, leaving a valid pointer. Uh, otherwise, an invalid pointer is returned, and uh, that will just result in translation fault. Uh, so here's another uh, example, uh, just to explain a bit more with how pack works. Um, to help with the deployment uh, of pack, uh, some of the instructions are uh, in the NOP space. So that means uh, effectively that systems without um, PAT uh, won't be affected. Uh, and so when you try and uh, run the uh, point authentication, it will just be interpreted as a NOP uh, and uh, not in PAT. 
Um, so within Linux, um, it was introduced in uh, kernel 5.0. Uh, there is detailed documentation uh, available. And uh, you can query uh, point authentication in user space as well um, to find out whether it's present and uh, whether the functionality is present. Uh, kernel does, or Linux does provide a, a mechanism to reset uh, point authentication keys of the process uh, to new values. Uh, from user space uh, point authentications uh, available, but you do need uh, new versions of uh, GCC um, as well as uh, bin utils and, and uh, GDB for debugging. Um, LVM8 and later uh, does support uh, point authentication uh, and Chrome U4 uh, and above uh, also supports uh, emulation of uh, point auth. Um, so uh, expanding on uh, the whole point authentication um, as that can mitigate against uh, ROP style attacks. Um, it doesn't uh, mitigate against jump orientated programming. Um, so uh, it's possible to affect the control uh, by targeting uh, or indirect branches. Um, so a chain of um, gadgets can be formulated. These branch targets uh, are not necessarily uh, persistent across functions. Uh, so they can't be authenticated. Uh, however, we can um, mitigate against some of these uh, jump oriented programming attacks uh, by restricting where uh, the indirect branches can land. Uh, and so uh, in arm 8.5, uh, we introduce the branch target identifiers, uh, commonly known as BTIs. Uh, and so uh, BTIs um, help resi um, restrict uh, the targets for the indirect branches. Uh, and so to be able to do that, both user space and kernel need to be involved. Um, so from user space, uh, BT, uh, BTI instructions uh, effectively landing pads for the indirect branches. Uh, and these are also in, in the uh, not space. Uh, and so initial support landed in GCC 9.1 uh, and bin utils 2.32. Um, you can uh, emit BTI instructions uh, relatively easily. Um, from the kernel side, memory pages do need to be marked as guarded. Uh, and this is achieved by setting uh, bit number 50 uh, in the stage one page table entry. And so here's an example of uh, BTI uh, in use. And moving on, uh, there's memory partitioning uh, and monitoring. So MPAM, uh, we do like our acronyms. Um, and so uh, MPAM allows you to uh, partition the L3 cache. Um, This can also, uh, this can then provide uh, more predictable uh, performance for some tasks. Uh, and, uh, and it allows you to, to monitor the memory traffic uh, that's going through. Um, so you can check on the uh, memory usage of specific tasks. Uh, memory tagging extensions uh, is introduced in 8.5. Uh, to protect against buffer overrun and the use after free space. And uh, you know, a, a physical address tag is effectively signed with 16 bit, uh, 16 byte granular, uh, granularity, sorry. Um, the physical address is then stored in uh, memory. And, oh, sorry, the, the tag of the physical address is stored in memory. Uh, and the logical and phys physical address tags are, are then tag checked uh, with an exemption uh, and can be thrown on a mismatch. Tag checking. Um, 
three kinds, uh, no effect, uh, synchronous exception and uh, asynchronously accumulated. Uh, the synchronous exception failure is more expensive than async, uh, but it does give you extra security. Um, so you choose which you want for um, use case. Um, MT emulation is available in KMU from KMU 5.1. Uh, and uh, thanks to uh, our dear friend Spectre and Meltdown, um, there are additional uh, options uh, to mitigate against speculation side channel attacks. Uh, so speculation barrier, speculation store barrier, bypass safe, and uh, predication invalid. Uh, the following uh, two features uh, are mandatory in both uh, ARM 8.0 uh, and 8.5 um, as far as uh, speculation goes to try and minimize uh, any of the impact. Uh, and they uh, provide uh, system registers that are available uh, across ARM implementations. Uh, transactional memory extension. Um, provide strong isolation uh, from hardware perspective, uh, failure of uh, atomicity, and uh, the best effort transactions. Uh, and uh, as an example for uh, public documentation of, of some of the new technologies. This is how it would look uh, when you go through the docs. Um, so uh, Morello um, is uh, our implementation of the uh, Cherry architecture from Cambridge. Um, more documentation is available and, and more details uh, and uh, there is a, a system being worked on. And if you go to the link here, uh, you'll be able to see that in action. Um, and so it's uh, a capability system uh, where point is extended to 128 bit um, plus tagging bit. And uh, those extra bits are used to uh, store the various capabilities. Uh, and those capabilities are, um, are unable to be forged. Uh, they can be copied. Uh, freely, uh, and uh, all rights can only be reduced, not increased. Uh, and uh, importantly, legacy code, code uh, can be compiled for AR64 ex uh, execution and can be run on the Morello platforms. Uh, so uh, pulling to a pure uh, Morello code base uh, can be more than just a, a size of change. Uh, and so I've, I've got a, a raft of links here. Uh, and for references uh, for you to uh, read uh, at your leisure. And uh, you can see there's, there's plenty there, uh, including uh, a couple more on Morello. And uh, that's about me. Any questions? I have not seen any questions yet, but I'll give folks a couple of minutes to ask. I appreciate it. I rattled through it at a, a rate of knots. So someone did ask if slides are available, um, and I can answer that one. Uh, our plan, um, as usual, is to ask um, all the speakers to provide a copy of the slides that they're able, and we will then link them to the Decimate Wiki page, so you'll be able to get the slides from there. I have to check IRC over here. Okay, well, I think we're probably um, good for this session. Thank you very much, Andy. Uh, I think we're ready for our next break. Okay, let me switch the video over.
but we have another break coming up for a few minutes if you need to run to the restroom or something and after this we'll have our first discussion topic where we're going to have a group of folks as a panel to talk about future directions of arm 64 on 3dsd and we'll have an adventure as the this is our first discussion group we'll see how this works it should be a lot of fun so we'll see you in a few minutes <laughs>